Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'adihi wa nasta'afiru wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina man yahdihi allahu falamudillala wa man yudhuhu maulana falahadiyalah wa ashadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika lah إلها واحدا وربا شاهدا ونحن له مسلمون وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إلها واحدا وربا شاهدا ونحن له عابدون وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا وقرة عيوننا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله أرسله سبحانه وتعالى بين يدي الساعة بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إليه بإذنه وسراجا منيرا صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى آل بيته الطاهرين وزوجاته أمهات المؤمنين وصحابته الغر المحجلين وعلى التابعين وتابع التابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين Dear Muslims there is a verse in the Quran that every Muslim at least repeated this verse 17 times a day. It is a dua, it is a supplication. And who taught us this dua? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This verse was supposed to humble us. This verse was supposed to put us in the right direction in this life. What do I want? What do I need most? And because Allah is our creator and he knows us more than ourselves and Allah said in the Quran Ala man khalaq. doesn't he know whom he has created and Allah knows everything and every single details about every one of us while we are all of us sitting in this very majlis no one knows what is going on in his body no one knows what is going to happen to him or her later on today. We don't even know what is happening to us at this very single moment in our life. Let alone to know about others. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directed us to what to ask him. So every single moment says, Ihdina sirat al mustaqim Guide us to the straight path. So that is what we need in our life, more than anything else. We need Hidayah. <coughs> and the guide is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yahdi may yasha, he guides whomever he wants. This ayah was supposed to lead me. Every word that I say, whether it is right or wrong, whether it is good or bad, whether it is evil or high or good, every action that I take, because life is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You might say a word, you might you will never be able, subhanAllah, to return it back. You have the chance to say, Allah has given it to you. But to return it back, it is impossible. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, if you want to be guided as well, you have to spread guidance. There is no one with the best of all, there is no one greater than the one that will spread the word of Allah. No one. وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا and spreads goodness. And he say, I'm, I'm among the Muslims. And the guided ones, they have a different criteria. It's not like any other people. That's why immediately after Allah saying this ayah, Allah says, وَلَا تَسْتَوِي الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيَّعَةُ This is not for everyone. It is not the same. A good treatment, a good dealing or bad dealing. The way you deal is not the same. اِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِي أَحْسَنُ Always. 
retaliate or even defense yourself not in a not in a good way <laughs> in the best way which means you choose which is good and this is good and this is better you go to the best but this is not for everyone this is for those who are guided and spread guidance you start from Hidayah you go to the Da'wah of Hidayah and then you are elevated to have a different criteria and that's why Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu said I wish I was not born when he was dying why? because he didn't want to have problem with anyone in this dunya whoever subhanahu whatever dealing that you are doing you are responsible of it you will carry it with you to Yom al Qiyamah. So Hidayah is what every mu'min wants. So in every rak'ah I'm begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide me. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. And because it is so high, very much important. In the Battle of Khaybar, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave Sayyidina Ali the flag. As a leader and as a commander. In a time of war. And normally, what you would ask. In a time of war, your soldiers is to fight to save, to protect, to stand up. But what was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's guidance to Sayyidina Ali? لَأَيَّهْدِيَ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجُلًا وَاحِدًا Allah to guide someone in your hands is better than to own all this world لَا إِلَهَا إِلَّا اللَّهِ It's not to win a war. It's not to open up a city. It's not to free a piece of land. <coughs> to guide one single person. But we had a little misconception among us. What do we think when we speak about Hidayah? Non-Muslim to become a Muslim. This is what we think. Hidayah is broader than that, greater than that. Hidayah is if Allah to guide you to say the best of words. Because you are responsible for everything that you are saying. And Sayyidina Mu'adh radiallahu anhu, when he, when he heard that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always speaking about you will be accounted for your words. You have to be very careful for everything that you are saying. Rasulullah keep reminding them. So Sayyidina Mu'adh said, Ya Rasulullah, are we, be, are we going to be asked about even the words that we say? Because he thought words are not part of actions. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya Mu'adh, and what, will, what do you think will throw people to the lowest part of the hellfire other than what they say? And that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever believes in Allah and the day of judgment should say something good or keep quiet. If you don't have anything good to say, from all the words that Allah has created in every dictionary, in every language, if you don't have anything good to say, then keep quiet. If you cannot bring people together, don't be a source of fitna between them. If you are not going to influence people to do something good, at least do not influence them to be to do something bad. So Hidayah is something greater than only someone to become a Muslim. Hidayah is something that we need. Because he died is like an information, like a guide. And every one of us is responsible. Every single man, every single person is responsible. And that was the understanding of the Sahaba Radwanullahi Alayhi. We see that with Sayyidina Salman al Farisi, that great Sahabi, a great Sahabi, someone that was looking for Hidayah since his childhood. <laughs> A Persian man, born in, within the Persian Empire, his father was in charge of their place of worship. 
Sayyidina Salman and Faris have been traveling before Islam. He left his country, he went to Syria, he went to Turkey. And even before knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's been going and asking and asking until he came to the Medina of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Waiting for the last messenger. And because khutbah is not a place for a lecture, I'm, I'm going to save the details. Sayyidina Salman al-Farisi, when Allah guided him and he became Muslim and he was with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what does he want? What Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted? Brotherhood between Muslims. Love between Muslims. And that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a very authentic hadith, لَن تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةَ حَتَّى تُؤْمِنُوا You will never enter Jannah. Unless you believe. وَلَن تُؤْمِنُوا حَتَّى تَحَبُوا And you will never be believers unless you love one another. No, you are good to one another. No, you respect one another. Not you honor one another. Not you support one another. All this is good. But the condition of Iman is to love every Muslim, every brother and sister of yours. And that's why that another hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Mu'minists are like one single body. Do you make a choice? If you have a choice, I, I choose my hands over my leg, my heart over my kidney. You cannot do that. That's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَن تُؤْمِنُوا وَلَن تُؤْمِنُوا حَتَّى تَحَابُوا You will never be believers unless you love one another. And in another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, those who love each other for the sake of Allah, they will be in thrones that is made of noor in yawm al-qiyamah. May Allah make us from them, ya Allah. Imagine to be rewarded for loving your own brother, your own sister. La ilaha illallah. This is this deen, the deen of absolute beauty. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, among the things that he did was, he made brotherhood between the sahaba, because he wanted them to love each other. <coughs> So he made a brotherhood between Sayyidina Salman al-Farisi and Sayyidina Abu Darda. Sayyidina Abu Darda, Sayyidina Salman al-Farisi, he came to visit his brother. Sayyidina, Salman, Sayyidina Abu Darda. When he came, he saw Abu Darda's wife was not taking care of herself. So Sayyidina, so Sayyidina Salman said, why are you not taking care of yourself? She said, you know, your brother is not interested in us. Every single day is fasting, and every night he's doing Qiyam al He doesn't need me, so why should I prepare myself? I don't need to prepare myself. So look at how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told them, and what hidayah is. So Sayyidina Salman said to Abu Dada when he came, he gave him some food. He said, Wallahi, I'm not going to eat unless you eat. So he ate with him. They told him, I prepared for you the bed you to sleep. He said, Wallahi, I'm not going to sleep unless you sleep. So he slept. And then in the morning, Abu Dada said to him, you know that I've got a system, I've got a plan. Every night I don't eat food at night because I need to do Qiyam late. Every single day I'm fasting. <coughs> so you, yesterday you have disrupted my plan. So Sayyidina Salma said to him, Inna li, inna li the rights for your Lord upon you and the rights for yourself upon you and the rights for your wife upon you فَآتِي كُلَّ ذِي حَقٍ حَقَهِ Give everyone their right. Sayyidina Abu Darda still was not convinced. He went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him that Abu Darda Sadaqa Salman. Salman was right. This is guidance. This is Hidayah. Hidayah is even to show someone what to do. And that's why Rasulullah said, It is Sadaqa to guide someone. If someone asks you, how can, how, how can I get to this place or that place? To guide them is Sadaqa. We need this Hidayah. May Allah guide us. That's why to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show you what to do. That's why we have Istikhara. That's why we have istishara, you consult people. And among the greatest guidance that we need in our life, among the greatest guidance that we need in our life is the hadith 
Wal Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Min husni Islam al-mar'i tarkuhu ala ya'ni." This is very much impossible in our time. So Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "From the greatest forms, from the greatest achievement of a, of a person as a Muslim is not to interfere in things which does not concern him or her." Look at how our time is wasted. What's up? What's down? Facebook, leg book, head book, all this nonsense. And Allah will not ask you about Qiyam about all this. You have your own problems. You didn't solve your own problems. What you are suffering from? You interfere in this person's life, this life, and then you see all the news of the world as if it is something that is very much important for you. In that very hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ibda bi nafsika thumma bi man ta'ul." Start with yourself, and then your immediate responsibility, and then you go wider and wider and wider. Look at all of us. Our problem is the problem of all the world is my problem. And the time that we are given in this world is very much important for us. We will be asked the Ummah Kiam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said لا تزول قدم عبد You will never move in your al-qiyamah even an inch until Allah asks you about your life what did you do about your time how did you spend it your youth your earning was it halal was it pure and your expenditure did you spend it the way Allah wanted you to spend it were you just were you fair Because to come to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala as mazlum, as an oppressed, is better for you than to come as a valim. Because the valim and oppressor, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Al-zulm zulmatun yom al-qiyamah." Oppression is darkness as yom al-qiyamah. May Allah save us. And the most important part is when you ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala guidance. What we say at Tabaru min al Hawli wal Quwa. When we say La Hawla wa La Quwa ta illa billah. I own nothing. I know nothing. Allah knows everything. To beg Him for guidance, and that's why say the Aisha radiyallahu anha used to say, Ask Allah subhanahu wa taala everything. If Allah did not make it easy, it will be even. It will not be easy even to tie your shoelace. May Allah guide us, purify our hearts, forgive our sins. والحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم my dear brothers and my dear sisters we need ربي سبحانه وتعالى and that's why ربي سبحانه وتعالى has opened for us the doors of dua to beg Allah every single time in سبحان الله the man that came to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ya Rasulullah, awsini, give me wasiya. Tell me something that I can do. The best thing that I can do in my life." So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to him, "لا يزال لسانك رطبا بذكر الله." Keep your tongue wet by the remembrance of Allah. And you know what? It is very difficult to keep just making dhikr, isn't it? As humans, we get bored quickly. You want to speak about that, speak about that, speak about that. But just to sit down and read Quran and read Hadith and seek knowledge, but gossiping, speaking about this person, speaking about that person, that is almost like a fruit of every majlis. May Allah save us. And that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "لا يزال لسانك keep your tongue wet with the remembrance of Allah." Can you just take one moment, my dear brothers? Please have sabr with me. Imagine if your mouth was dry, there is no any saliva. Imagine that. Will you be able to move your tongue? No. That is Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam teaching us. As far as you are using your time in anything that is not like dhikr, then that is a dry thing. You will never benefit from it. 
May Allah make us from the zakiri. And that's why every form of ibadah that you do, there is time for it. There is time for salah, there is time for fasting, there is time for hajj. There is limit. You cannot go extra than two rak'ah for salah for jum'ah. Except for dhikr. With kurullah dhikran kathira. Remember Allah a lot. In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praise the people of Iman, alladhina yadkuruna Allah ha qiyaman, wa qu'udan, wa ala junubihim. Wherever you are, where you take a karun. And even when they were not doing dhikr, what do they do? Just they contemplate and they think. Now, with all the technology that we have in our hands, we don't even have the time to think. To think. May Allah guide us. May Allah purify our hearts, purify our intentions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the last word that we say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Allahumma hdina al-huda. Waj'anna mimman khafaka wa attaqa. Wa la tuwallina waliya siwa. Allahumma ina as'aluka ya Rahman ya Rahim. Ziyadatan fi al-deen. Wa barakatan fi al-umur. Wa sahatan fi al-jasad. Wa tawbatan qabla al-mawr. Wa shihadatan inda al-mawr. Wa maghfiratan ba'da al-mawr. وعفوا عند الحساب وأمانا من العذاب ونصيبا من الجنة ونسألك يا أرحم الراحمين يا أول الأولين يا آخر الآخرين يا ذا القوة المتين يا رحم المساكين نسألك يا الله بأسمائك الحسنى وصفاتك العليا نسألك يا كريم ألا تحرمنا لذة النظر إلى وجهك الكريم يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون إلا من أتى الله بقلب سليم واسقنا يا الله من حوض الحبيب المصطفى والنبي المجتبى بيده الشريفة شربة هنيئة مريئة لا رضما بعدها اللهم إنا نسألك يا رحم الرحمين تجعل اجتماعنا هذا اجتماع مرحومة وتفرقنا من تفرق معصومة ولا تجعل فينا ولا منا شقيا ولا مهروما اللهم اجعل خير أعمالنا خواتمها وخير أيامنا من قد القاك فيه واغفر يا رب لآبائنا وأمهاتنا وأجدادنا وأجداد أجدادنا ولمشايخنا ولمن علمنا حرفا واحدا من القرآن العظيم ولكل من طلب منا الدعاء ولكل من أحبنا فيك وأحببناه فيك نسألك يا الله الهداية والصلاح والتقوى ونجعلك يا كريم يا رحمة تجعل آخر كلامنا لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أحينا عليها متنا عليها وعثنا عليها يا كريم والحمد لله رب العالمين